Hey, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to show you five gathering techniques. There are obviously more, but I'm going to show you these five. Before you continue this video, let me know in the comment section which gathering technique you use. Today, I'm also going to start editing the dress. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. And do I need to say more? No, do it. For the skirt, you will have two rectangle patterns. One is the skirt and the other one is the waistband. For the waistband, you will need your waist measurement. On that measurement, you need to add seam allowance for the zipper placement. The width will be the same width as the waistband interfacing. That is most of the time 8 cm, including the seam allowance. If you want a good full skirt, I recommend to triple the waist measurement. And if you want to be more precise, you can add the seam allowance on that measurement. The skirt length is up to you, just make sure that you add the seam allowance. I always do 3 cm, one for the top and two at the bottom. I'm using these five fabrics, some are leftovers and some I have for a very long time. Alright, the first thing you need to do is to interface the waistband. Iron the fusible side on the wrong side of the fabric. I didn't do the silver one because it can take much heat. You can use non-fusible interfacing if you are facing the same problem. First I'm going to search the edges because this fabric fray very easily. To start with, mark the seam allowance on the fabric, then secure the thread on the seam allowance like you normally would do. And from there on you're going to start the burning stitch. The reason behind this, if you gather the seam allowance as well, you make the fabric thicker and it will be more difficult to install the zipper. The worst scenario is that you can't close the zipper. The thread is a little bit longer than the waistband. I always double thread the needle. If one thread snaps, you still have one left to continue with. The downside of gathering by hand is time consuming for impatient people like me. What I do like about it is that you can determine the size of the ruffles just by making the stitch width smaller or longer. Once you're done with gathering, spread it evenly when you have reached the waistband length. Tie a knot to hold the gathering in place if you want to and pin the waistband down. Align the ruffles then sew along the edge. If you're done, it should look like this. For this method, you need to sew a basing stitch along the edge. Change the stitch length to the biggest length. Start sewing on the seam allowance like I showed you before with the silver skirt. Don't backstitch and also not when you reach the end, because you need those thread to pull it later. This is definitely my favorite gathering technique. I use this for all my prom dress tutorials. Now pull the thread to gather the fabric. Sometimes for some reason it doesn't go properly as you can see here. Um, if that happens try the other side like I did here and most of the time the other side goes very smoothly. The downside of this method is that it isn't sturdy enough, the thread can easily snap. Use this gathering technique for lighter fabrics. Then spread the ruffles evenly like I showed you before and then pin the waistband to the skirt and make sure the ruffles lines up with the edge of the waistband. And when you sew the waistband onto the skirt, keep an eye on the ruffles so that the ruffle don't stick out between the waistband and the skirt on the right side. And yes, I'm sewing right over my pins and I don't give a damn.
this is basically the same as the previous one the difference is that you're going to sew two basin stitches instead of one this method is more sturdy than the single one I would use this method for light or medium weight fabric When you're doing the second stitch make sure to sew straight as possible and that you don't cross the other one so what are you doing somebody is so devoted to suddenly just stop loving you you can tie a knot on the other side if you want to then pull the thread to gather the fabric if you still decide to use this method for heavy weight fabric loosen up the tension so it will be easier to gather the fabric i forgot to do it so it took me a while to gather the fabric When you have visible stitches on the right side, just simply remove it with a seam ripper. With this method you're going to gather the fabric on machine by hand. This works great if you don't need your fabric to end of an exact length. If you have, which I have, place a pin in the center and at the end so you can keep an eye on how much you need to gather in a certain place. In the beginning it can be difficult but once you get the hang of it, it will be easy to do and it's a super quick way to gather fabric. What I like about this method is that you can gather right away on something you want it on. I would use this method for light and medium fabrics. I've seen Michael Costello using this technique and I also use this technique for the Alice in Wonderland costume. For the last method you're going to sew over the cord, place the cord underneath the foot in the center and change the stitch to the wider zigzag and sew the zigzag over the cord. I secure the cord so that the cord doesn't slip away, be careful that you don't sew into the cord otherwise you have to start all over again. This is the most sturdy and the fastest of all gathering methods. It is a great option for thick heavy fabrics as you can see. Once I had the desired length, I secured the other side with a bit so I could freely spread the ruffles without worrying about messing up the length. And then sew the waistband into place. I don't have the footage of the sewing part, I forgot to press the record button. And then you're going to simply remove the cord out of the seam. As you can see, I sewed on the bottom stitch. You can also sew a little bit underneath. Next, search the edges. Make sure that the seam is facing up the waistband. This will be useful for later. Then insert the zipper with the bottom side facing up like so. And place the zipper stop in the center of the waistband and sew the zipper into place. To make sure the seam is even, close the zipper before you sew the other side. If the seam doesn't match, you can arrange the zipper. When the zipper is attached, fold the waistband in half, then fold the seam allowance up. Then sew close to the zipper with a zipper foot. If that is done, push out the corners. I 
have the dead folded seam allowance and the waistband in half and pin it a little bit over the stitch line you want to fold it over the stitch line because when you sew in the ditch you want to stitch right through the other side of the waistband and not next to the waistband So now stitch in the ditch If all layers are too thick for your sewing machine you need to do it by hand with a rib stitch Next close the side seam and lastly finish off the bottom edge 